Hey, this is Presh Towalker. This was an actual question for $100,000 on the game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? When multiplied by itself, which number is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1? There are four answer choices, and bear with me because I'm going to read them aloud exactly as I read them on the game show. Answer choice A, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Answer choice B, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Answer choice C, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And answer choice D, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So which answer is it? Remember, you're answering this on a game show. So there's time pressure where people are looking at you. You have to give an answer in a reasonable amount of time. You can't use a calculator. So what is the correct answer? Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. So this question was on who wants to be a millionaire in the U.S. Whiz Kids Week and the contestant was Sojus Wagle. This aired in November of 2016. And I will mention that if you were watching a Mind Your Decisions video in December of 2015, you would have seen a video about the beauty of mathematics where I shared exactly a pattern that is used in this question. You would have instantly known that the answer is a number which has exactly nine repeated digits of one. And you would have instantly been able to say that the correct answer choice is B. So you never know when mathematical facts like this will come in handy. So keep watching and maybe you'll pick up an answer that'll come in handy in the future. So anyway, why does this pattern even happen? We have 1 times 1 is equal to 1. 11 times 11 equals 121. 101 squared is equal to 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. If you have a number which has k digits of 1 squared, so we have 4 digits of 1 here, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the pattern continues as we go all the way up to 9 digits. Now the pattern actually will continue even more, but you start carrying over the digits, the maximum digit we could have is 9, so the numbers look a little bit different. But this is an amazing pattern. Now why does it happen? A good way to visualize this is using multiply by lines. So if you have 1 times 1, we just have one line multiplied by one line. That gives us one intersection, which is 1. Now what about 11 times 11? For the first number, 11, we'll draw one line for the tens digit. We'll then leave some space and then draw another line for the other one. For the other number, we draw the lines in the other direction. So for the tens digit of 11, we draw one line. Then we leave some space and draw the other line for the units digit. Now mark every time any of the lines intersect with each other. We will now count vertically aligned intersections. On the left, there is one intersection. In the middle, there are two intersections. And on the right, there is one intersection. And this means that 11 times 11 is equal to 121. Now what about 111? So we have three lines for one number, we have three lines for the other number, and we get all of these intersections. So we count vertically aligned intersections. So here's one, here's two, here's three, here's two, and one. And 111 multiplied by itself is equal to one, two, three, two, one. And now you can see the pattern is going to continue because we're creating this symmetrical lattice between the two numbers. So in this one, we're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. If we have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, that is 5 digits of 1 multiplied by itself, we get this square lattice, and this will be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that's why the pattern will continue. It'll actually continue indefinitely, but once you get where the vertical column will have more than 9 intersections, you'll start getting carryover, so the numbers will look a little bit different. Now, professional mathematicians have written about patterns like this. This particular pattern, where we have 1, 2, 3 going up to k and then going back down to 1, 
These are known as wonderful Demlo numbers. The name is due to Kupriker writing about them. And this particular paper is from Gunjikar and Kupriker. Now, why is the name called Demlo? Some people believe there's a town called Dombuli in Maharashtra, India, and that became shortened to be Demlo. So in any case, these are very interesting things mathematically. Now, how exactly did Soja solve the problem on the show? He didn't know this interesting bit of trivia. So he came up with an amazing method, and I want to share that with you. So he first started thinking about what would happen if he multiplied two digit numbers. So let's just say 20 by 40. So 20 by 40 is equal to 800. So he thought in his head that, well, we have one zero and 20, one zero and 40, and we end up with two zeros in the answer. So when you multiply, you're kind of adding the number of zeros together. So then he looked at the number that we need to attain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So you can count there nine digits plus eight digits, which is a total of 17 digits. So if you have a number multiplied by itself to get to 17 digits, how can you do that? So let's look at answer choice C. He thought, well, this answer is actually very close to 10 billion. It's larger than 10 billion. So this is 10 to the power of 10. Now, what would happen if you take 10 to the power of 10 multiplied by 10 to the power of 10? You would get 10 to the power of 20. You add these exponents. Now, 10 to the power of 20 is a number that has 20 zeros. Now, if you have a number that has 20 zeros, it would have more than 17 digits in total. So this is too big. C cannot possibly be the answer. So where do we go from there? We can go to the next answer choice of B. So answer choice B is approximately equal to 100 million, which is 10 to the power of eight. Now, 10 to the power of eight multiplied by 10 to the power of eight is equal to 10 to the power of 16. So this will be a number that has 16 zeros in the answer, and that would be a 17 digit number. This is exactly what we want. So Soja said, okay, I'm going to have answer choice B. That is my final answer. And in fact, this is the correct answer. So I think it's interesting that even if you don't know the exact way to get the answer, you can use the tool of estimation to figure out that B would be the correct answer. Amazing question. And the problem just goes to show, you never know when mathematics will be important in your future. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.